okay guys and we live and here it is right this is charlotte um charlotte labor day the norm tournament i just came from this is round two round two of charlotte right the tournament if you've missed round one um, of course you'll be i'll be linking the playlist so you guys can go check round one it is the most recent video go check the youtube is right there make sure you guys go check that out from round one now round two today right this is the name of the video actually is a trip my first trip to london with joe baba my first trip to london with joe baba i can't wait for y'all to see the thumbnail it's gonna be awesome of course it's me and joe baba having a great time right so right okay first trip to london with joe baba is the name of this one reason being is because this is the first time i have played the joe baba london over the board one of my favorites i'm a, uh in a way i mean i've been going nasty with this opening to be honest in fact if you do the numbers right and i always recommend of course, my students that uh, that um, know this, we use certain tools where we can see basically what our numbers are. So far on my training accounts, my Joe Baba London in many different lines over 60 games or so um, with 2,500, 2,600 competition, my uh, performance rating is over 2,700, over 60 games, right? With 2,500 plus competition. So my Joe Baba is disgusting these days. Now, with that being said, um, it's, uh, let's see. Let's get into the game and see what else is going on. What is your first time in London with Joe Baba or first time? In, uh, first time in London. It's a. Uh, it was my first time in London with Joe Baba. So it's kind of just a play on words because it's the first time playing the Joe Baba London over the board here. Now me. Right. It's me versus Robert Martin Del Campo, international master. In fact, I beat him in 2016. That was probably one of my best games ever. I played the C3 Cecil for the kill. And I went for a gambit line and he will never play again on me. Second time, we got a draw back in March or May, something like that. And then I got another one. I got another, uh, um, I think, no, wait. No, this is the third game, actually. Yeah, this is the third game with him. So you play the English in this game? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I play the English in this game. All right, here we go. So I'm playing white. I play D4 against your mans, right? So I'm playing D4. They're like, Tansy playing D4? What? Only time I'm going to play D4 is if it's aggressive. If it's not aggressive, I'm not playing D4. Once again, by the way, thanks again for my guy, um, Watchful Prism, for gifting 50 subs, bro. 50 gifted subs. That's why you see it going off like that. Because that's 50 piece from, from my guy. So after here, right, D4. Okay, he goes Knight of Six. I know he wasn't expecting this. He don't know what I'm going to play these days, right? Like, really. And that's how I like to keep it, right? I have a very, very wide repertoire now where uh, at certain points, I'm playing only certain things. I'm only playing this now. Now I'm only playing this. Now I'm only playing this, right? Because you want to be very versatile. Also, Magnus says, and then this is from the world champion himself, you need to, you need, you have to play different openings to become a better player. So if you fail to do this over time, now, right now, especially if you're under 2,000, you're not even 2,200 yet, absolutely, you can play the exact same thing, literally full life. But as you get better, and of course, if you do want to get better, I highly recommend that you do start switching up your repertoire. Some of the openings that, you know, maybe you're an attacking player, start playing a positional opening. Get out of your comfort zone. That's going to cause you to grow. And then go back to your, uh, your openings that you love to play so that you play them even better now. With that being said, here we go, big fella. D4, Knight of six, I go Knight C3, that's for me. He goes D5 and we live. Now I did my prep and I knew what he was going to do already. I knew he was gonna go for this line. I love this Bishop F4 stuff. I remember now when you start experimenting with new openings, you will get your head cracked, okay? You will get your head cracked and you're gonna feel like you are absolute garbage. Let me say that again. You're gonna feel like you are absolute garbage. But when you first started, that's supposed to happen because you don't know it. You don't have experience there. There's an article out that says, hey, it was by a GM, actually chess move, if you want to really know. But they were saying in there that even if you are a thousand all the way to twenty five hundred, you are effectively a beginner when you start a new opening. I'm going to say that again. When you start a new opening, you are effectively a beginner if you are a thousand, even a twenty five hundred. That's what he said. Right. in, in that article, it's very, very important. So I remember I was garbage. OK, straight. Garbage. Wow. I was trash with this, but now I'm taking out the trash with this. Right. So it's different. It's different after a while you get more used to it. I studied a lot of games like I've, I've done a lot of work with this. You know what I'm saying? So um, London system. Nah, not the London. Right. Don't disrespect me like that. Fallout Pro. Don't even disrespect me like that. I do not play the London system. Big fella. Wow. Bruh. Come on now. But I will play 
the Jobaba uh, because it's more aggressive. I'm, I'm always into aggressiveness. If it's not aggressive, it ain't me. My grandfather is Tao. He said, sack first, think later. I'm going to follow that. And he opened a visceral at Forest in London. That's correct, but it's Jobaba, London, right? So stop it there, NJ. Don't even do that to yourself. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much. OK, so with that being said, Bishop at four, the idea here is a lot of times catching people off guard, not even off guard. Like I remember playing this from the black side against um, Andrew Gorovich. You can actually check that game. Right. Check Chicago Open Playlist 2019. You can go to YouTube right now on the channel. Check the playlist for Chicago Open 2019. You'll be able to see this against Andrew Gorovich. He played this with the white pieces. I played Kings Indian, tried Kings Indian ish. Right, and I actually ended up losing. And I went for the C5 option, which he ended up Joe Bava in Joe Bava in me. Right, that's not a word, but Joe Bava in me. He did that. In fact, I got Joe Bava basically C5, E3, Knight B5. I had a Knight on A6. He played A4. He just squeezed me to death, basically. It was a terrible game in a way. Fast forward, I'm now playing it. Right, very strong stuff. Bishop f4. So Robert plays c6, which is totally a move here. c6 is a move with bishop f5 type intentions. And I knew he was going to play this because of based off of what I saw him do before, um, especially in my in my um, pregame analysis, right, before the game. So I knew he was going to play this. Excuse me. I play e3. This is correct. Uh, I actually I accidentally started playing the Jobaba London opening by accident when I first started playing. No kidding, really nice. Yo, that's what's up. I thought it was Eric Rosen. Probably like come on, be man, deep on and what it go in <laughs> 960. So all right, e3, bishop f5. After bishop f5 here, okay, chat. It's on you. It's on you. White to move. What would you do in this position? What do you do in this position? Let's test some theory here. Let's test some of the people in the chat. This is for you. This is for you to learn. Of course, even if you're new here and you're just watching, what do you actually do? What do you think you do in this position? Bishop f5 on the board. We got f3 from Motivator Mark. Either f3 or bishop d3 to trade bishops. Resign, maybe. I forgot the London theory. Chase the bishop. Elevation says f3. Okay. Okay, anybody else? Knight f3. Pretty good. In fact, bishop d3, knight f3, h3 are all moves. King e2 is absolute 100%, 1,000% base blockage. And it is also 100%, my guy. Like, don't even do that to yourself. Wow. Yeah, you're going to get about five of those. Just develop your pieces. Correct. So f3 is actually the move. f3 is the move in these positions. Usually in any bishop f5 with the Jobavas, you would play f3. Followed by g4, h4, h5. But you need to play this stuff correctly, right? You may, I mean, you can get this far in the Jobaba and still get crushed, right? So after F3, E6, then I go G4. He goes Bishop G6, I go H4. Literally still theory. He goes H5, and then what do you do here, chat? What do you do here? This is all theory, all theory right here. And it's going to get a little complicated in a minute. It's going to get very complicated. A lot of stuff here. You have to know what you're doing. Push Gary up the board. Okay, G5 from elevation. Seriously, I like 92, G3, Bishop, H2. That's the more slower way. But if you play slow, this is not an opening that you want to play very slowly, C dark 44. That's how you can get in trouble because you're giving chance, Black a chance to consolidate and get his forces together and try to come at you. We have G5 from everyone, in fact, and G5 is correct. This is theory. Knight to G8 is what he played. Now, you also have Knight to D7, which is the Gary way of playing. Gary Kaspar, uh, Kasparov has a line. That he played knight to d7, and it's a secret game in a way. It's not even in the database, right? I got some real serious theory on this. And he plays knight to g8 in this position, right? So knight to g8 here. Okay, what do you do in this position, guys? What do you do? White to move. What do you do now? Kind of looks like the same as KID with f3. Something like it. Something like it. Oh, wow. Yeah, we need one more sub. We definitely need one more. One or two more subs. <laughs> Fix that. I add two of six. Oh uh, man, no, you should be uh, you should be good, Chess Ninja. Refresh it, refresh, bro. Yeah, refresh, refresh. Oh, he has that chorus, hey, amen. And I got more than that too, as well. Bishop d3s, we got bishop d3s, bishop e5. Good night, I gotta go, Canty. All right, lha, good to see you. Your bishop might need to drop back sooner or later, says sarcastic. That's a very good idea. In fact, there's a few moves here, guys. Chat number one, move number one is knight g to e2. With the idea of backing the bishop up and playing knight f4. I have done that a lot to play knight takes. You also have a3. Not a fan of it. Um, you have queen d2. I like this. This is flexible. 
with the idea of bishop d6, then you go knight e2. And then if they take it, you play knight takes f4, queen d6 can happen. Of course, even taking on g6 is a problem with bishop d3 hitting g6. You're casting, you also have e4 and queen h3 when the queen gets to d6 at the right moment. Knight goes to e7, they try to castle you, take on g6, you can go knight e7 check. Boy, I'm ready, right? I'm ready. Okay, shout out to Hikaru. I did go to the school of Hikaru. I did go to the school of Hikaru. I know how to draw the arrows. Even when I'm cooking food, I look up at the ceiling to, to collect my thoughts, right? But that being said, knight g8. After knight g8, I do go bishop d3. I do go bishop d3. Bam, there it is. Bishop d3, that's for me. That's for me. Easy. A light work. He takes it. Now you have two ways to capture here, chat. Which way you capture it? Which way are you capturing white to move? I wanted to take you to remember this theory. It took months to be honest. I'm not even gonna lie. I mean, and I say months because I like to work on things a lot, but it really didn't take like that long. I mean, it does take time, which, which with each opening, I try to understand the objective, but also the critical squares, which here are F4, E4, G3, D4, E5. And shout out to Chess Ninja D1. We have queen takes d3, c takes d3, queen takes d3, c takes d3. Okay. Okay. In fact, it is queen takes, guys. Queen takes is better. There are times that you take with the c pawn, but it's very rare. And I really, I'm not a fan of the c takes d3. I'm just not. It's, it it kind of goes out of the way of like what I'm, what I'm used to. There you go. Watch, but we have six, six, seven, baby. Right. Queen takes d3. So queen takes d3 is the move. He goes bishop d6. Now, after bishop d6 here, um, what would you do in this position, chat? What would you do in this position? And this is where it gets a little odd. And here in this tournament, let me tell you what I was looking for. In this tournament, I was obviously looking to norm up in this tournament. But I was also looking to see where do I have weaknesses at that I can pay a lot of attention to. And when I'm back from my tournament, I can work on these even more. And I found that. In every one of these games, I found where my weakness was. And that weakness was usually in middle game to end game transitions or figuring out the right plans in the middle game. And I knew this. And now it confirmed it through this tournament. So through this tournament, I was able to find what a weakness is for me, what the biggest weakness is, and what I need to do to correct it. So in this game, in this game here, it's not middle game yet, but what do you actually do? It is white to move. And what would you do here? It seems to break your pawn structure if you took the pawn. That's correct. Got the theory down, yo. You know it. 92, G6, Knight G to E2. Bishop takes D6. Castle Queen side, Knight H3. I will push the G pawn. Um, is this another kid? No, Robert uh, Martin uh, Del Campo is an old is a, is an old head. Like he an OG, he an OG for real. Like yeah, he been out here. I mean he you know he a cool dude too, bro. But he an OG. He's an adult. Knight e two castle long. Okay, knight g to e three. Would you like to say the exact weakness? Yeah, yeah it's a middle game. Absolutely middle game, which is a lot of times when you get stronger, that's where you find your middle your your problems to be is mostly in the middle game. So I'm working more on that, and I found that throughout each game. G6 is nasty. Castle and pawn break. Castle queen side. Knight GD2 is solid. Okay, so let me give you the choices here. Number one by the engine is knight C to E2. I call this the Magnus move because Magnus has some games that if you check in the database that he has played knight C to E2 on more than one occasion. Knight G to E2 is a move that I like to play. This is actually a move that you play mostly in these type of lines. Um, just following principle, following the lines. Knight G to E2 is usually a move. Right, I did think about castling queen side. In fact, I did want to castle queen side, but it, and I was looking at this, but then I'm like, there's knight f5, and now you're in trouble. Now you're out here looking absolutely ridiculous. What did you do with your life, my guy? Wow, get the man off the board. You are straight for, for real. So I had to run back. So I had I was not with that, right? So castle queen side, not looking too good. You do have knight g to e2, and then we see g6 is as well, and knight h3. Knight h3 was another choice I was choosing. Knight h3 or knight g to e2. But what I chose here in the end was actually a move that the engine did consider. And here, this is where, of course, this is one of the weaknesses that I noticed here in, in this tournament. In this tournament, what I was really looking for is like, okay, obviously to norm up, get seven points, which is extremely hard to do with this big field. Some of these people in this section got three norms. They just need rating. So it's hard, you know, beating them. And some people got two norms. Some people got one. These guys are not going down easily. With, and some of these guys are already I am. So with that being said, right, you know, it, I had to figure out where is my problem at? And I found that and figured out that it is the middle game and plans and ideas and making decisions, even though I have a consistent way of making decisions based off a, a series of questions that my, my, my students know what those are. 
at least some of them. So with that being said, though, you know, I chose G6. I chose G6 because I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. And I can't wait to see the analysis of this. G6 is what I chose. This was not the best move. In fact, the engine says it's still equal. But G6, I was like, I really want to play this because he didn't play G6. And if F5, like there's all kind of attacking. I like G6 a lot. What I didn't like, what I didn't like is his next move. For some reason, I did not see. I, I was calculating bishop takes F4 and F5. That was really all I was calculating. But what I did not calculate here was F6. And he played F6. Um, shout out to Fine Go. You know, he going to hate that. Right. But here, F6 is what he played. And I froze for a minute. I was like, see, this is why, right? You know, you have to spend a lot of time and know where you are in-game wise, middle game wise. And spending time with the openings you like to play in all areas. Checking every single game. And I'm not even lying, guys. Like, you know, you go to the database, it could be 100 games in one variation, right? 100 games in one variation. Imagine going through 100 games in one variation. That's just going to immediately be like, I don't even want to play this game. But that's just how I feel. F6 is very annoying. In fact... Then I had aspirations. I'm like, okay, maybe if he trades, he could play rook h6 and 97, and g6 is going to be weak forever, right? He can even play e5 at the right moment. So I'm out here like, dang, f6 is kind of annoying, but I know I wanted to play g6. Cool, perfect, right? Okay, white's move. What do you do now? He plays f6. Chat, what do we do next? What's the next move here? What's the next one? Yeah, right. e5 free for black now, says So Shang. Yep. That is a move. E5 could happen, but it is white to move right now. So being it white to move, what would you do about this? So this guy right now, based on, uh, uh, just so you guys know, uh, Mar Robert Martin Del Campo is an international master. So the guy I'm playing right now is an IM. To be an IM, you must play like an IM. Correct. Castle long, castle queen side. Okay. Bishop takes E6. You mean D6 quantum. Okay. Could you castle now? Castle queen side, knight GD2, knight GD2. Very nice, chat. Very nice. In fact, it was just castle queen side. Just get out the way. Very easy. Right? He goes 97. Right? He's hitting g6. He's developed. He's even threatening stuff like captures and rook h6. Right? Now, at this point, I have a decision to make. It is white to move. How do I proceed? g6. I like your fighting spirit. Thanks, Mitchy92. I just wanted to play g6, and I wasn't as sure. But now I'm, I'm very sure that g6 is just not the best move anymore. But I needed to know this, like I had to go for it. Like, and I'd rather go for it and take the risk and be wrong later on than to never take the risk at all. And you have to fine tune that. You have to really fine tune that. Should I take the risk? I need more experience, right? And when you're playing new openings, you need experience. A lot of experience in many, 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 many positions and analyzing them. So with that being said, I'm like, okay, cool, let's go for it. So we hit this position, he plays 97. And now it's on us, chat. What do we do? We got rookie one, knight h3, knight g to e2. We have e4. E4, sarcastic guillotine. Okay, e4. Okay. I see you, bro. Straight garbage. What is he doing with his life? Garbage. Wow, are you serious? Garbage. Straight up. Garbage. Disgusting. Garbage. Tell him again. Garbage. Wow. Bishop takes f4, get the man off the board. What are you doing? What are you even doing, my guy? What are you even doing? What's up, Devin Booker in the building? What's good, my guy? Wow. Let's run that back. Send the structure to his address. We got it on file. That's 100% Cambodian face blockage. That's right. I see face blockage in the chat. That's right. Absolutely. He blocked with his whole face. So, 97. Right? After 97, we got some moves. Uh, E4 is not a move. We do have 90, 92, Ricky 1s, and Knight H3s. Oh, SpongeBob, you need to Spongebob. Hold up. Sheesh. E4, right? Yeah, you was face blockage there, sarcastic. That's good that you admitted it. That's okay. Now, the first step to face blockage and overcoming it is to admitting it. Very nice. Now, after 97, after 97, the move I choose is knight h3. I develop, I wanted to go 92, but I didn't like the fact that I blocked the file. And if just in case, I want to be able to put a rook on the file with a smile and not have to worry about the knight blocking the file already. So I play knight h3, I'm out of the way. If e5 tends to happen, if e5, well, then I'm going to take these, not even think twice about it, take, take. I can play bishop h2. Wow, engines say knight g5. What? 
Oh, I did look at this. Knight g5. And if takes, I have knight f7. And then queen moves and I take and I come back, right? So I saw this already. I did have this. And just like knight g5. That's crazy. But I also considered bishop g5. I have bishop g5 as well. With the ideas of f4, e4, right? I can even take in some cases and play queen f5. Like this is pretty good. This is pretty good. I knew this was coming. This is why g6 was a big, a big decision. Because I'm like, I know g6 is going to be problematic for him. So I played knight h3. Right, engines are gross. Oh, they really are. My God, like, disgusting. Knight h3. And all of this is still playable. Not to say that I won't play this again, but all of this is still playable. And I actually still might consider to play this continuously because I have looked at the engine analysis further into the game after the game. But beforehand, you know, before you have this information, it becomes a difficult game. Right. But here's what he chose. And when he played this move, number one, it is the number two engine move. I thought it was uh, literally straight up. Garbage. I thought it was garbage for real. And he played knight a6. I'm like, bro, what? Like, What is this, bro? This is not a move. Bruh. I was like, yo, what is this? Knight a6. So I really thought I had him. I really thought I had him right now. Like right now, I thought I had him. Now, white to move chat. What do you do here? What do you do? Now, in fact, when I say I thought I had him, right? It's not like, oh, this is over right now. But it, when you're playing big boy chess here with the big fellas going for norms and et cetera, when you, when you play in big boy chess, literally all it takes is one tempo. All it takes is one move, right? All it takes is one move for you to get a very bad position, cramped position, and it becomes terrible for you. Let's see what we have, chat. You have A3, 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 not 92, A3 looks safe, okay? Pretty cool, pretty cool, okay? Pretty nice. Pretty nice. A3, probably E4, blow open the center. Nice. Very, very nice stuff here. Very nice chat. So I'm going to tell you what I did, right? What I did was A3, okay? A3 is correct, or A3 is right. It is one of the moves from the engine. A3 is cool. It's a cool, it's a cool move to make. And the reason why I settled on A3 is because I was really annoyed by Knight before and him dislodging my queen. What I wanted to do here was play E4. This is what I thought in my head. I'm going to show you what happens here, right? And this is one thing that, I, of course, weakness-wise, every time you go to a tournament, you have the games, you do what you do, y'all duke it out, you analyze the games, and you also analyze how did you feel emotions-wise, what were you thinking, what were the thinking patterns, and et cetera. Here, I thought about this plan. I saw it clear as day, but I just couldn't give myself a chance to do it because I was like, but I'm down. I'm just like, if this doesn't work, I'm not looking good. And this is what happens. In fact, the engine does say E4. This was my first move, knowing all the plans and ideas of the Joe Baba, studying this inside and out, left and right, every day. E4 is a move you play many times. You also stop E5 and you deter C5. So E4 is the engine move. But what I didn't like here, watch this, is knight to B4. Now let me show y'all something right here. Tell me, chat, what happens on knight takes G6? Oh my goodness, get this man off the board. Sheesh! Yikes, Bruh. that's not a move. Knight takes g6 is gg, and I knew this. I knew this. Why isn't knight takes g6 G six a move? I see e5, e5, e5. Okay, is it unanimous? e5, e5. Okay, all right, e5, e5. Why? You're garbage. That's not a move. Garbage. Wow. Garbage. 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 Try again, big fella. Garbage. That's not a move. In fact, actually, bishop takes d6 is better first. It's better first. Bishop takes d6. Because of e5, I can just take on f4, right? Like, this is the move. And I guess this is still playable, right? This is still playable, okay? You can play this. And I saw this line. In fact, I was looking at this, right? Like, queen g6 check. You know, bring the king up and takes. And this is great. I mean, this is feeling good. But what's better is the clearer way, not giving them more counterplay and not giving your chan your, yourself chances to make mistakes. His bishop takes d6. Snap those. He takes. And then hitting with e5. And we live. Thank you for the peace, right? We getting something out of this, big fella. For reals. So, with that being said, right, I knew that was a thing. But what he has, though, is the in-between move, the Zhishin Zug. Is knight to b4. This is why a3 is important because after knight b3, now what do you play now, chat? This is all engine here, and this is what I saw, but I didn't like this. I didn't like this because I didn't like the fact that I was giving up a pawn, 
And I did see the pressure that I could put on him, but I didn't believe that it was realistic. And the engine says, no, I can't tell you good. Like, bro, like you're good out here. Like you got this man. Bruh. And I was like, I don't really know. You know, so after night B3, B4 though, he is the queen. Where would you go, chat? Queenie three, queenie three, queenie two. Okay. We got queenie threes and queenie twos. In fact, queenie two is the better move. Reason being is because I can shift to this side of the board, which is important. After queenie two, knight takes g6. So right now, I am down a pawn. Yes, okay, a pawn does not dictate the game. It's not over. But if you fail to convert, or if you fail to make the accurate counterplay, you will just be down a pawn against an international master, right? That's just not a pretty, pretty place to be. So I knew this was coming, right? After knight takes g6, you know, engine gives bishop d2. Are you serious, right? Who's going to play bishop d2? By the way, that's move number one in this position. Bishop d2? Are you serious? What is this? Right? My first thought was just taking to keep the momentum rolling, to keep it pushing. So bishop takes d6. Uh, this is what I would have did. And then I was going to play rook g1. By the way, I was looking at all of this. And what I didn't like is he had knight f4. After knight f4, and I'm calculating all of this, right? Takes, he takes with check, he hits me hard, I step out the way, and then he defends the pawn. And after he defends the pawn with like rook h7 or something, at this point, I'm down a pawn. I am down a pawn right now. Now, right now, weirdly enough, is now, actually, you know what's crazy? Uh, he's supposed to castle, and this is nuts here. Because I didn't see all of this, and this is, you know, the engine helps you so much. Right now, it's plus four after rook h7. That's crazy. I think any rook move is plus four. That's nuts. And I'll show you why. Rick H7 is plus four because after A3, you back up and then we take on D5. Sheesh. And then if you take back, I mean, like E6 is hanging. Knight takes D5. Like, she, bro, what? That's crazy. I didn't see all of this. I only saw it to kind of this far. I was like, eh, I'm, I'm down a pawn, right? That's what I was thinking. I'm down a pawn here. The engine says best moves are King F7, which is kind of fine here, to be honest. He can swing the other Rick over. I don't have any real checks yet. This is not that weak. You know, this is like, eh, you know, it's not like you're winning, right? This is why I didn't choose this option. So again, right, this is, I knew I was kind of off in my decision making. And this is something that I, I looked at overall as a theme, something to work on after the tournament, right? Because here I was like, I'm not, I'm not that comfortable with this yet. I'm not that comfortable saying that I'm going to give this pawn up and hope to win later, right? You know, and I'm down a pawn. So I didn't go for this at all. I didn't go for none of this. I played a3 to stop knight b4. That's what I played. I played a3. After a3, he, he takes on f4. I take back with the knight. He goes queen d6. And at this point, I'm like, dang, I can't play e4. Now, right now, it's zeros. It's zeros. I can't play e4. Right, this Joe Bava is not looking the way that I wanted to. Now I'm actually kind of regretting the G6 move, you know, and, and it, it was kind of annoying. Now I can't play this again because I know what I should do and the plans and etc. And I'll show you what happened after Queen D6. Right now, what would you play in this position, chat? It is white to move. What would you play? We got a few options here. I'm gonna tell you what the engine says. What do you do now? Queen D6 is on the board. You said 92 from Kara, which knight? Queen d2 from Parsons. After calculating all the way, rook h7, a3, and a whole tactic. Yeah, it's really hard to see, Olabe. Correct. Because I didn't see. I did calculate up to queen takes f4 check, and I moved the king, and I'm like, uh, and I kind of stopped calculating right there. After queen takes f4, hidden check, I'm out the way, I'm down a pawn. But, you know, they always say, you know, always calculate one more move. But if you do that, you'll never stop calculating. But they do say that, though. They do say that. So at that, uh, it's uh, white to move, right? White to move. Where are we going? Rick H to G1. Knight C to E2. You got King B2. Wow. He can't even play King B2. He can't even play King B2. Y'all know that? He can't even play that. Knight C to E2. I didn't think he mean King B1. Right? They who? Oh, yeah. It's, the, it's them. You know, just the boys and the gals. You know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Knight H3. No, not Queen D2. Okay. All right. So here it is. In fact. Engine says, number one, move number one, shout out to you, is queen d2. Move number two is queen e2. Move number three is rook h to g1. They're virtually all the same, virtually all the same move. Here, I play rook h to g1 because I was really kind of, not frightened, but annoyed by the fact that this is the next sequence of moves. Rook h6, trying to play e5. 
trying to take. Right. This was annoying, you know, and I also have this defend. I just wanted to make sure this was defended. He castles queen side, and I was very proud of this move right here. I found the number one engine move in this position. Um, it was very nice, and here I thought for a while. I thought for a while. E5's coming. Like, how do I do this correctly? I was really, really happy about this move I made right here. It's white to move. What do you do? What do you do right here? Doesn't he have e5 all that time? Yeah, e5 he could play, but I always could back up and go to the g5 square is what I was looking for in many cases. e4. All right, e4, you blocking with your whole face there, foe. Yo, what's up? What's it going? Thanks for the follow. e4. Yikes, night hangs. Oh, my goodness. Knight a4. Knight a4, I'm not really trying to go to c5. Knight a4. And plus, e5 is just immediate still, which I'm not a fan of. Rook e1. Rook e1, I mean, yeah, but are you trying to push e4, right? You have to have an idea. Is rookie one to push e4? But you can't because the knight's here. So this is your dilemma. In fact, check this out too, guys. He has knight f5. In many cases, knight f5 is really annoying because knight takes h4. Knight takes h4 is real, right? It's a real move if I'm in trouble. Okay, I got to be very careful on how I proceed here. King b1. Yeah, I thought king b1, but he's just going to probably chill or do something else. Yeah, king b2, funny. Rookie one, knight b5. Oh, man. Knight b5. Sheesh. Come on now, snip the fox. You know this is an over-the-board game, right? And I'm playing an international master. Knight b5. Oh my goodness. Somebody get this man. Wow. Knight b5. Move the knight. Uh man. Knight b5. Sheesh. Right? That's not a move. Knight b5 does not work. And no one has said it yet. And in fact, here's the move. Why not knight a4? Well, knight a4, right? Knight e4 runs into, I mean, probably e5 immediately. Can I put e5 right now? Um, it just says that everything's still equal. So knight a4 is indeed a move, but what's your follow-up? Are you putting the knight here, right? I'm not. I need to play b4 and then knight c5. Out of left field, but queen f1 to get to h3. In fact, wow, shout out to you. Chess ninja got it. Okay. Okay. All right. You are not garbage. Good job. Right. Queen F1 is the move. Queen F1 is what I chose here. Because I knew, right? And there's a series of questions I like to ask. Of course, you can get lessons to figure out what those are for me. But those, um, I use a series of six questions that I combined from two different grandmasters that had two sets of three questions. So instead of trying to, is this one right or is this one right? I combined all six of them. And then one of the questions, of course, is like, you know, what does my opponent really want to do next? He wants to play e5. He wants to play knight f5. Another one of those questions is actually what is one of the what are the weaknesses? E6 is weak, right? E6 is extremely weak. So queen f1. Well, I never knew this, but I guess I'm supposed to be <laughs> right. So queen f1 actually deters him from playing e5 immediately because if e5, I go queen h3 check and he out here looking crazy. The knight can come in here now. I'm hitting g7. I'm hitting the rook. Right? This is crazy. There's all kind of and I x-ray his queen at the same at the same time. What's the well, number one? Dr. Giuliano says, what's the plan? I'm x-raying the queen, right? Number two is if knight f5, I was going to play queen f2 because knight f5 was an annoying move. And I wanted to be able to play queen f2 to reroute because in certain cases, especially if e5 right here, I want to be able to even play e4 in some cases or taking first and then playing e4 and making it very strange, right? Takes, takes, and then playing something like e4, which is very strange. Takes, takes, like you got this kind of position. It's strange, but I like it. Rook to g5 here. I'm threatening this. This is super weak. I knew all of this was coming. And queen f1 gets out of the way because the queen is blocking everything. Uh, it's really blocking everything. I want to play queen f1, and it looks in the way like I'm playing queen h3. Queen h3 next. Boom, and hitting e6. Hitting e6 at the same time, right? If e6, I still have queen h3 check followed by knight e6. And I'm x-raying the queen once again with the e4 for the score. Big boy stuff, right? Why queen f1 instead of queen e2? Because if queen e2, then he can go knight f5, and now you are here looking crazy, right? You can't go queen h3, which was the whole idea of queen f1. I mean, you can go queen e2, but like now I have, I'm forced to go this way when like he has more, more room to make errors if you go queen f1 with the idea of queen to h3. Maybe he'll make a wasted move like king to b8, which gives me a tempo. Queen e2 doesn't give me any tempo at all, and he can just freely do what he wants, knight f5. E5, like even E5 he could play because I can't play Queen H3. So it's very important to play something like Queen F1 to keep the flexibility open. Snip, Sniper the Fox. Thanks for the Prime, bro. Thanks for that Prime. 
Appreciate you. So queen f1. I go queen f1. I was very nice, happy about this move. He finds, very good move. He plays knight to c7, right? So now defending e6. Very nice stuff. Thanks for, thanks for the follow, Tommy Chums. And then right here, in a way, I slightly panicked here. And this is one of the things that I knew I had to work on during this tournament. I was like, okay, where's the weakness set? I'm really just trying to play my games here to figure out where's the weakness set so I can you know, get consistency on my decision of where my weakness is. So when I'm done with the games, I can go work on this, right? Now, with that being said, I knew that this is the weak area for me right here is choosing the correct plan and do the calculation and also the six questions I use as well. With that being said here, guys, is, is white to move. What do you do in this position? You say 94, 94 really doesn't help much. I can play B6 actually. And you don't have a check. You can't play knight C5 and it looks like a waste to move. I mean, we kind of provoke the weakness, but not really. We even help him play C5 in many cases. So 94 actually doesn't help. Where do you go now? What else do we have? Tommy Chumps, thanks for the follow. Right now, covers A6. Yeah, the knight covers A6, right. No future knight 4 Yeah, I mean, he would have to, like, it's very difficult to play knight 4 It's just not working. Knight E3. Oh, you mean D3, because that's the only square here. Knight to D3. Okay, that is correct here. Right? Now, let me show you what I was, what I was calculating here. Right. In fact, rook d3, chop the tree, and not a move. Knight f to e2, that could be a thing, but I think knight f2 was now, I played queen f1 and then knight e2, I'm backtracking. That can't be right, right? Think about that, right? I'm st I played queen f1 and then played knight e2. Yeah, that's, something's wrong. You can tell you know, your game's starting to go wrong if you're starting to backtrack like this. So I was not moving this knight right now. That was not. If queen h3, I was actually in trouble because knight f5 actually wins wins material. And how does that win material? Well, e3 is hanging. Well, why don't I just defend e3, chat? Rook d2, and he just takes, and then he's going to look at you sideways, like just staring at you. He's just staring at you, bro. After rook takes, snap those, and like now you out here looking absolutely this is gross. What did you do, right? So... Queen h3 doesn't work anymore. So I was like, well, I can't go queen h3. And you're about to be looking at me all crazy. So, you know, I didn't play queen h3 at all, right? Knight to c7 after knight to c7. I mean, you do have rook g2, which I thought about. You know, I thought about all these moves. Queen f2, I mean, I thought about. But then I was like, okay, he probably wants to play e5 or something like that. So what I did here, chat, is I played knight d3. Now, let me actually tell y'all what I was thinking here. Knight to d3. I was not a big fan of this. In fact, I thought rook h6 was what he was going to play. The engine said that this was totally fine. But in a way, honestly, guys, I panicked here. I panicked because I was like, he's going to win this pawn. And again, g6 I knew was kind of shaky in the beginning. And I couldn't wait to get to analysis for this because I didn't know. I was like, I don't know. And if I lose this pawn, I mean, I could end up losing the game if I'm not careful. Right. So. I knew that this was weak. And actually, my whole thought process was completely wrong on if he would have played rook h6 here. What my thought was is I'm going to play f4, which actually is not that good. I thought if he played f4, if he plays rook takes, well, then I can play um, rook takes g6. I have takes, takes, and then queen g2 or queen g1. And actually, this is the line I was calculating. Queen g2, knight takes, queen takes. After queen takes, in fact, the engine says he's almost better by minus two. Almost up two pawns right now because he has queen f8 but i thought i had enough counterplay here with rook to h1 hitting the knight and the, and the pawn i'm also threatening f6 so i thought you know i actually didn't even consider queen f8 and it says my best move is to capture do you think i'm about to capture this queen Bruh. are you serious no i'm not about to capture this but any other move is almost minus three believe it or not crazy so i'm like dang bro what Right, you know, the, after analysis, finding this out. So after knight d3, right, in my head, you know, I was thinking, I, th I probably spent like 15, 20 minutes here on this move, I remember. Because I played knight d3 and I offered a draw here. Because I'm like, I don't like this. I don't like this at all, in fact. Knight d3 is very scary. If rook h6, again, f4, and we go through that line, I'm down a pawn. What if he takes with the knight? Cool. I even thought I would be okay because I have f5. I thought this was sweet. I'm like, oh, I just play f5. But then I even missed this. Knight takes h4. And now it's minus two, right? And, and looks are very deceiving in chess. Very deceiving. If I take on g7, this knight takes f5. 
Boom. He takes, hit the rook, hitting e3. Oh my goodness. This is a family channel. Let's get that off the screen. That's just gross. So after f5, right, I thought he would take it, but he don't have to take it. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Chess Dojo live. Hey, Chess Dojo with the raid. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for the raid. Hope you had a good chat, a good, good stream over there. Oh, yeah, all amazing raids. You already know. Let's get a shout out to them. There they go. Thanks for the Chess Dojo coming out. We in any part of this game that I played. This is round two of my Charlotte tournament. So I'm going through and I offered a draw right here after 93 because I was not feeling Rick H6, bro. It was scary. Hey, yo, Chess Dojo in the building. Let's go. Make sure y'all say what up to Chess Dojo. Go ahead and with the follow if you haven't already. Definitely a channel that I watch quite often, actually. So after Rick H6, you know, I thought that Rick H6 would be a thing. And I was I was fixated on this F4 move. But in fact, the engine says I'm just fine after just Queen F2, which is like, what? What if he just takes it? Right. But then now it's different. Because now after takes, takes rook g197, the h4 pawn is defended. So now I know I can go through this line and play g6, but I have to be I have to be okay with giving up g6 and putting the rook on g1 after queen f2 defending h4. Fine, Budakis with three months. Let's go, bro. Let's go. To watch the Charlotte tournament live. It's already over. It's already over, Tariq, uh, DC. I mean, it happened. Um, It was last week. Or uh, it ended Monday, something like that. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, are you a Wolverine fan? I mean, I'm all Michigan fan of everything. Costia says hi. Absolutely. I've seen him in the chat. He said, hey, yo. My guy, Costia. What up, bro? Where's Robert from? Cuba or U.S.? He's from Mexico. Go blue. You know it. Yeah. He, and, and go green, too. I get it. Yeah. But no, no. This tournament already happened. So this is uh, this is the post-game analysis of stuff. So, but this is the where I could have went. But I offered a draw on 93 because, honestly, I was shook in a way. I thought that I played this wrong, but it's completely equal. But I really thought that I played this wrong because G6 is weak. He can play Rook H6. And the only source of counterplay I saw was F4, F5. There's something about, you know, and even you as a, as a human, as a chess player, think about this, right? You know, when you get down material, especially for the over the board players like that, anyone over the board, if you get down material, sometimes, I mean, you feel like it's vital and everything revolves around you getting this back. Because if you don't. You could end up losing the game, especially with it being a slow push game and you playing somebody extremely strong. So I thought about this. I'm like, yo, I'm playing somebody strong here. This is tough. I don't know how I'm going to get this pawn back besides F4, F5. And it feels like it's unclear. Also, it feels like black is better, which the engine says it was. Again, after Rick H6 being the line, I thought I had to play F4. And after F4, Rook takes again. I am Rook takes G6, right? And then Knight takes an F5. This was going to be my whole sequence or even Queen G2, sorry. Queen g2 is going to be the sequence after knight takes h4, queen takes g7. Right now I'm hitting f6, f6 and rook h1 being the thing, but this was not the way to go. In fact, black is just better after queen f8, defending the pawn. I still have this over here. And I mean, with best play, it probably can still be a draw as you face in a human here. They're facing a human. They have to play the most accurate moves. I did not like this though. I didn't like this at all, bro. So I offered a draw right here on knight to d3. Thinking that like, yo, I'm like slightly worse when in fact I was just equal. After rook h6, again, I can go queen to f2 and slowly build up this way. So if he takes with the knight, right, this is a little bit different because now if rook takes again, if rook takes, let's look at that. This is what I, what, what could have happened. Queen f2, rook takes g6, rook takes, knight takes, then rook g1. Boom, I'm hitting, I'm hitting this. This is something I, I knew that could happen. h4 is defended. But if he takes with the knight, I didn't see this. Like, you know... <laughs> How hard is it to just play Rook G2 here? And just like, yeah, it's equal, bro. You're fine. But like, bro, like you can just defend and then move, right? That's what I thought here. This is not that easy. Rook G2 and then doubling, right? This is not easy. I play, I, I hate playing G6 in my Jababas. Only line I play this is if I have the Knight on E4 and you have Knight takes E6 threat. Yeah, that is something that is important. And I actually learned that now. Simon says, don't be afraid of ghosts. In fact, I think he talks about that. Is that reassessor chess? One book, it had to be Silman. Pushing your own agenda. One of them chapters. He had that in there, though, about people seeing ghosts. Um, yeah, shout out to that. But here, I could have went for this line, but I didn't. So after knight d3, I calmly just offered a draw. Because I was like, yo, I think he's better. I think black's better. And he has a target. And this isn't what I wanted out of the opening. So I offered a draw here. And uh, what he did. He took it. Like, he just took the draw, bro. I was like, oh. Okay, let me go back to the drawing board and figure out what I need to do better, 
right? Because this was not what I wanted. So because it's not what I wanted, what was I thinking? And how can I be better? How can I be better going forward, right? So this ended in a draw after knight to d3. Because I really thought he was going to win this and just be up a pawn. And I felt like, I felt it slipping away when this was a very good way to stop and the bleeding in a way before it even happened. But in fact, in a way, I was seeing ghosts. I was seeing ghosts, right? G6 was not the move. Yeah, in fact, G6 was not the move. So going back from the beginning here, G6 was not the move. But it really, I mean, like, it was so tempting. I'm like, G6? Like, I gotta play G6. Like, I just gotta play G6 here. Like, because if I don't, he's gonna play G6, is what I thought. And I was like, yo, if I let him play G6, like, he's good. But in fact, I actually found this through the engine. After 92, if he plays G6, in fact, white's already better. White's already better after castling. You have E4. You can even play bishop E5 in some cases. I never knew about this. And I was like, wow, you don't even know until you start analyzing your own games and studying more. But I found this out a little bit later. I was like, wow, that's cool because G6 is what he can play. And this is something that, of course, is not covered in any theory, by the way. Any theory you study on Joe Bible London is you'll never find G6 there. At least what to do is white. You know, so with that being said here, I'm like, I didn't want him to play G6. So I myself played G6 in this game and I'm um, hoping for the best. And I, I can't lie. I did miss F6. I did not expect him to play F6 at all. And this is where all the complications kind of came from. I castled again, Knight H3, right? He went Knight A6. Here, I could have made another E4, right? This is another, imp uh, another, um, another novelty but also improvement improvement i played a3 because again after e4 after e4 i thought he would go knight b4 and then after queen e2 there's um knight takes g6 right and then after takes queen takes and then here rook g1 and again i didn't see this knight f4 i stopped calculating when it, after this and i was like oh he's just about to hit me with check why would i allow him to do that but the problem here is calculating further that's always the thing that they tell you. Always calculate further, but then again, you'll never stop calculating. And I remember stopping my calculation right here. And I was like, I'm just going to sidestep. But I failed to realize that rook takes g7 is a move and a3 is a huge threat. So, you know, let's say he defends the rook or the pawn once again. We play a3 and now the knight has to move away. And then d5 is hanging, followed by e6 and everything. This is gross. This is a family channel, right? Get the man off the board, right? I didn't see this. I just saw queen f4 check and dismissed the whole line. <laughs> of course, that's not right. But I, I just dismissed this whole line because I'm like, oh, no, I'm not about to do this. Like, I'm down a pawn still. But now I know this is why experience and going through your games and analyzing and how did your emotions feel and things like that, right? So this is my first trip to London with Joe Baba. That's the name of the title for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something for it from it. Um, we're going to have round three tomorrow. We will be actually analyzing that. So if you're new to the YouTube channel, make sure you guys subscribe here and uh, see you guys on the next video.